You're watching Higher Things Video Shorts with me, Pastor Chris Hall. If you're looking for an easy way to support Higher Things, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Also hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any Higher Things content. You can follow Higher Things on social media and our website over at www.higherthings.org. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, we ask that you remember us in your donations and prayers. Hey everybody and welcome back to Weeding Through History. Today we are going to talk about Luther's time at the Diet of Worms or Worms. Uh, Germans pronounce it with a V, I use W, V, I go back and forth, you know, just to keep it fresh. And then post worms, what happened to him right after that. So Luther's been causing trouble. Not intentionally. It's not like when he started this with the nailing of the 95 Theses, he goes, man, I really hope I cause a ruckus in the church. No, he's doing what every reformer did before him, like John Huss and others. He's simply saying, here's a way, here's a place where the church has gone astray. And I'm saying, let's discuss it. Let's bring it back to its practice. So, of course, as time goes on from 1517 to 1520, he's written treatises, he's had debates, and he's drawn the attention of Charles V, who's now the Holy Roman Emperor. So he has this diet, which is basically not a, a trial per se, but almost to that point of trial. So they bring Luther to Worms, and Frederick the Wise is there, Charles V is there, um, representatives from Rome are there, and Luther's put on trial for his teachings. So first, and when Luther comes into Worms, he is like the champion. This is like a celebrity status, you know? This doesn't happen too much nowadays with pastors, but if I could compare it to anything like people knowing him, it'd be like Billy Graham in the U.S. Now, don't take, oh, Pastor Holt said Billy Graham's the same as Martin Luther. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying status-wise, people know who he is. He is known in Germany. And then you have the evil Romans coming in to tr put him on trial type thing. So they have his books there, and they're examining him, and they're saying, you have to recant these. You have to say, what I wrote, I either didn't mean, or what I wrote is false, and I deny them. And then that can be distributed throughout the empire, and we can all go back to normal. So as this happens, first day Luther says, you know, I need more time. Takes the time. The devil torments him. He's in anguish. The next day, they put him on trial again. They say, will you recant these? Will you deny the freedom of a Christian, the Babylonian captivity of the church, the letter to the German nobility, your debates in Leipzig and Heidelberg, your 95 theses and the explanation of them? Will you say these are false, your critiques of the papacy, your critiques of indulgences, your critiques of the penitential system? And... Luther says, well, I can't because it's not my thoughts. These aren't just my opinions, man. This is the word of God. And he says, I cannot recant them. And then we have that famous saying, here I stand, I can, I can do no other. God help me. From there, it erupts. Luther leaves. And of course, Frederick the Wise, reason he gets his name, is very wise in this. He knows that if Luther travels back to Wittenberg, someone's going to kill him. So he plans this capture, this kidnapping, and he kidnaps Luther. He uses his own men, kidnaps Luther, and whisks him off to the Wartburg Castle. That was Frederick the Wise's castle. Takes him there. And Luther stays there for months. First few weeks, he wines and dines and doesn't party, but he has a nice time. He even talks about how he feels sick because he's eating so many fatty foods. But then Luther does a phenomenal thing with his time. Now, most of us, when we're on a vacay like that, we take our time and relax. Luther, instead, gets a Greek New Testament, the Latin New Testament, dictionaries and everything, and he goes to work on translating the New Testament into German. And he does this, and he does it so quick. He does it in like 11 weeks. I can't even read the New Testament in 11 weeks. And Luther translates it from the Greek into German. It's amazing how he does this. And it shows us how valuable the Word of God is to him. It's not his opinions that matter. It's not his experiences that matter. What matters to Luther is the Word of God. And that's what he treasures. That's what he spends his time doing at the Wartburg. 
And what we're going to get into next week is what's going on back home in Wittenberg? How does Luther's Bible get introduced to everybody else? And why does Luther leave the Wartburg, the safety of it? Because he's an outlaw now. He's been uh, excommunicated by Rome. He's an outlaw. So why does he leave the safety of the castle and go back to Wittenberg? What causes that? And that's what we're going to get into next time. So God bless you all, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.